<laughs> hey, Erica. Hey, stranger. Who are you? I'm I'm Ed, your long-term boyfriend and co-host of this show, The Rock Cut Review. Sounds real suspicious. Does it? Yeah. Okay. Get out. I prefer Get not. Out. We have this video to I shoot. I don't know you. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the Rock Up Review. I'm Erica. I'm Ed. And uh, today, we're drinking. That's, That's classic. something we do. All right. But we're drinking Taiwanese whiskey. Oh, okay, there we go. That's different. That's what makes it special. That's new. Yeah. We've never had a Taiwanese whiskey on this How show. How did we get Taiwanese whiskey? This was a, gen well, not generous. I had to pay him, actually. He didn't give it to us for free. But it's it was generous. a bottle split from my coworker Eric Schmaltz. Well, he considered splitting it with you, which is generous. Which is very nice of there him. There you go. Right? Could have gone to someone else. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, and if I had to buy the bottles, they would have been like 200 Fifty dollars each. So sounds pretty generous. Okay, it's pretty generous. It's nice of him. Yeah. It's a pretty good move. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. So these are Cavalon. Cavalon okay. is probably the most famous Taiwanese whiskey. Cavalon actually the name comes from the indigenous people of Taiwan. Neat. They came from the Cavalon Plain, which is now Yilan County in Taiwan. Okay. But that's where the name comes from. They're making single malt whiskey. And what we have today is soloist, which apparently is another word for soloist. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought they just misspelled soloist on the bottle. I don't know where it's good. So. Yeah, yeah, no, apparently soloist is a word. Well, now I've learned a new thing today. There you go, there you go. Good They've got work. a very like orchestral theme to a lot of their whiskeys. So this is their solo, single barrel. Yeah, single barrel, not a single wheelbarrow. A single barrel. Okay. Bottling. So it's a so list. Neat. We got two things here. We do. So this is kind of cool. One of them is a Muscatel sherry cask. The other is an Amontillado Ooh, sherry cask. Ooh, I love Amontillado. Yeah. Is that and how you that say it? That guy who was buried Amontillado? in a cask of Amontillado. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that guy got murdered. Yeah. It was grim. Yeah. I never, that would be one of my worst ways to die. Being buried alive. Oh God, that's yeah, terrifying. That's terrifying. That's the worst. Except for maybe drowning. Yeah, that's also, that's just being buried alive by water. Or being lit on fire. I don't There's know There's a which lot one. of bad ways to go out. We, yeah. went, we went off a deep end here. We did. We did. Yeah. Try not to get buried alive if you can help it. <laughs> anyway, so yes, one of these is Muscatel grapes, which tend to be Sweeter, okay. Sweet, a sweet grape used to make a desserty style of sherry. Okay. The other is amontillado, which is a nuttier, drier style of sherry. Okay. Yeah. All right. So should we start with the nutty dry and then go into the sweet so we don't ruin our noses slash palates? That makes sense. Okay. Starting on our right with amontillado. I wish we had a bottle. The bottles are super pretty. Are you putting up pictures? I'm putting up pictures. Maybe I photoshopped them well. Maybe they look like crap. I'll try to make them look nice. It does smell nice. It, it does like smell nice. Doesn't smell like a really fruity sherry though. Mm -mm. No, that is that is nutty, cashewy, almondy. I think more cashewy than. You think more cashewy than almondy? Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Just because I think cashews have more substance than almonds. You mean like they have deeper conversations? Mm -hmm. Are almonds just very? They're very superficial nuts. They are. Yeah. Thought I wouldn't lean into that, but I did. <laughs> I like it. There's some things I like. I don't like the finish. That's what it is. Mm. I like it in the beginning, but the finish is a little musty. The finish is a little musty. It's kind of a kind of an old, old grape kind of taste. Got 
leather thing to it. Kind of a yeasty, mm. yeasty grape. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like how that sounds. I kind of like, because like, various types of sherry are aged differently, right? Yeah. Some are aged natural or organically, naturally. Some are aged like oxidatively. I might be mixing my terms up, but one's oxidative, one is made, aged just with yeast. And Amontillado is kind of a mixture of both. Okay. So I'm getting a little bit of that yeasty, nutty, grapey funk on the finish. I mean, yeah. There's not a lot of like, but on the nose, there's not so much fruit. It's just mostly nuttiness. I get some fruits, but it's very much like dry. I feel like dry cherries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and cashews. Mm -hmm. The entrance on this though, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of just light, honey, malt, like that heather, honey, pretty standard single malt taste. Yeah. I don't get a lot of sherry on that until the finish. See, I feel like it takes you on a roller coaster. Like it opens with those things you said, and then I hit like a point of sherry, and then it just gets like, that sherry was poured on leather. And you don't necessarily care for that? No. Yeah. Yeah, that does seem like a thing you might enjoy. Though. I kind of like it. Okay. It's... I, there is a point where things get too musty for me. Yeah. For sure. But I find that more with port than I do with sherry. This is a good amount of musty. Port tends to go too far. Yeah. yeah. Should we try the muscatel? Let's go. Get into it. Yeah. I almost said goo it. Like, let's do it. Let's and get goo it. it. I don't like that. Though. Goo it. Do the Margaret Thatcher. Just goo it. Do the Margaret Thatcher. It's the only dance named after a villainous crone. Also, there are like a billion names for muscatel grapes, I'm finding out. Hmm. Musket grapes, I guess, or muscat, musket, muscatel. They... This tastes more like whiskey. I taste it already. I like it more. Okay, fair enough. The nose is a little bit fruitier. Yeah. Maybe more cherry on this. Yeah. It's got a woody thing going on, but not damp wood, which I think I was getting from the Amontillado. Mmm. Oh, this is definitely sweeter. Yeah. This is definitely sweeter. Yeah, noticeably so. Yeah, I like it though. It's not like, oh, we're finally sweet. It's just no. like, it's sweeter on comparison because the other one is like... Pretty dry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Amontillado, pretty goddamn dry. Yeah. This guy, it's not cloyingly it's sweet. It's fresh. Yeah. It's fresh grape. Yeah. Yeah, it's not It's not like jammy though. No. No, it's like fresh grape. Yeah, it's, it's woody and sweet. It's, it's not just yeah. pure sweetness. Yeah. No, there is a nice wood spice backbone to this. Yeah. A little bit of that baking spice. Make cloves. Clove. Clove, I can see clove. I wasn't, I was like, could this be cinnamon? But it's not quite spicy enough to be cinnamon. No. No. It's more of an earthy spice. Yeah. Of the two. Oh, the Moscatel is definitely better. Yeah. Yeah. On the nose, definitely. And you know, maybe that Amontillado is better for someone else who just isn't us. I just don't like how dry that is. Yeah. Yeah. And I like dry whiskeys. Don't get me wrong. I like dry whiskeys. But I also like sherry, when sherry, sherry whiskey has that big, blooming, blossoming, fruity sherry note. Yeah. I'm a man of many tastes. Most of them bad. That's, wow, you should put that on our, on our page. That should be my motto. It really should. A man of many tastes. Most of them bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's accurate. That's branding. That's professionalism. Mm -hmm. Rock gut review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the Amontillado well enough. The Moscatel, clearly superior. Yeah. Agreed. At least for our tastes. Yeah. At least for our tastes. If you've had these, let us know what you think. Yeah. Yeah. There may be people who really love the Amont... Is it Montiato? Amontillado. Man, I'm bad at pronouncing Spanish. I could be pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. Maybe. I'm going to trust you, though. You seem smart. That's foolish of you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this has been the Rock Cut Review. This is our first experience with Taiwanese whiskey. Yeah. They're doing a pretty good damn job. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. And to Eric. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. We love you. You're a beautiful man. Yeah. Yeah. And until next time, make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course... Like, comment, subscribe. But also, stay rotten. There we go. Two hands, Steve drink out of both. This is a bad idea, it's not getting in my mouth. <laughs> I got a little in my mouth. Did it mostly get on the ground? Nah, yeah, it's mostly on my chin. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Are we calling that Steve Austining it? Yeah. Yeah? What else would it be? Well, no, that makes sense though, because boom, yeah. boom. I'm leaving this part in so everyone knows this is officially called Steve Austining it. I don't think we're coining it, like that's... Is that a thing? 
Did people already call that that? I don't think... If they aren't, like, I'd be surprised they haven't been. Can we just call like, it Stone Colding? Because saying Steve Austining it is, is kind of long. Yeah, that's true. What if we just call it Stone Colding? All right, let's Stone Cold it. Stone Cold it! <laughs> <laughs>